Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sardana. Nice of you to drop by. I consider myself to be a master procrastinator and I used to just love to work under pressure. Um, the process of me working under pressure would normally go like this. I'd just kind of sit in front of my work and go, um, Sardana, if this piece of work doesn't make you want to scratch your brains out, then you're just not doing it right. And then after that, I'd go and sit in a corner and cry for half an hour. Then I later realised that this process of working just wasn't fun. It just wasn't very um, ideal. I used to find myself spending more time worrying about the fact that I haven't done any work than actually doing the work. So I decided to find a new way to be more productive and enjoy working more as well and finding more motivation. And I just thought I'd share that with you today um, in case you are going through a similar thing where you just feel really unmotivated and overwhelmed. So the first thing I do when I feel overwhelmed is calm down. I don't know, calm down. Calm down. I find that it's really hard to think when I'm in a panic state. I uh, normally do this by doing some therapeutic cleaning of my desk because um, tidy desk, tidy mind. So um, I recommend maybe cleaning your desk area and kind of setting the scene for a nice productive study session. The next thing I normally do is get like a rough piece of paper and jot down all the things that I have to do. You could do this on your computer in a notebook or a piece of paper. It doesn't really matter, but it just needs to be like a rough list of all your tasks. And then after that, I normally number the tasks on my list based on two factors. So the first one would be the time taken for the task to be completed. And the second one would be like the priority priority of the task so say if that piece of work is due in the next day well then it's obviously going to be the number one priority but say another task is due in the same day and it takes less time you're going to want to do that first because it's just so much more satisfying to see more things get ticked off the list but it depends on how important everything is so you need to take both factors into account and then after you do your numbering just go do your task like a good crewmate and if you lack motivation, that's completely normal. I remember when I was rising for my A-level mocks, and sometimes after I finished the list-making phase, I used to just sit in my room and stare at a wall for about an hour. But I think it's really useful if you just, like, take a second to remember why you're revising or why you're doing that piece of work in the first place to kind of get some clarity on things. I found that there's a correlation between liking something and being good at that thing. Take, for example, revision. If you really enjoy biology as a subject, you're going to want to revise biology more. And if you revise biology more, you're going to be better at biology. And if you're better at biology, you're going to like the subject more because we as people like being good at things and we like the things that we're good at. Does that make sense? I hope so. And you can absolutely fake it till you make it. I mean, we all know back in year eight, you pretended to like PLL because everyone else at school liked it. And um, in year 10, you started listening to Simon A. Garfunkel because your crush at the time liked it and then you became a huge fan of him anyway. Was that just me? Hello darkness, my old friend. And if you're feeling unmotivated because you don't understand something, don't feel scared to ask your teachers. I made the mistake in my A-levels of thinking that I could figure things out on my own and thinking that I was inferior to everyone else if I went and asked for help and that's absolutely not the case. I realised that it's the actual vocation and job of a teacher to help you. And if your teacher's useless, you can always ask your friends or people in your lessons to help you. And if you don't have any friends to help you, well, well you're lying. Because you do have that one friend. She's always lurking around. That's right, Miss Google. She's a real one. You can Google almost anything nowadays. And there are so many resources available to help you. From YouTube videos, to articles, to free online textbooks, to BBC Bite Size. <laughs> And you can absolutely do it. All you need is the right mindset. You just need to be able to believe in yourself and believe that you can do it. And if you're still feeling overwhelmed after this, know that that's normal. And please feel free to talk to someone about it. You can talk to anyone, anyone who's willing to listen. I find that, I find like, I've... That, that you, um, you had, you, you... I find that sometimes the best way to de-stress is just verbally vomit onto other people and kind of just like take a few seconds to complain and then just get it done and over with and then after that never speak of it again. But just make sure you find someone who's willing to listen. It could be your friends, it could be your parents, it could be your siblings, it could even be in the comment section of this video if you like. Someone's always there to listen to you and someone's always there for you and you're not alone in this. I think that's all I have to say for today. I hope that this was somewhat useful. Um, if it was, please give this video a thumbs up and please do consider subscribing if you want to see more content from me. 
I hope you have a lovely rest of the day and good luck.